Hey everyone, today I've got a bunch of propagating to do, so we're gonna get to that. And we are in my little empty corner because it is home to my philodendrons now. Since they like this lower light setting and it's working really well for them. So let's get to propagating. Okay, so I recently tried air layering on my Milano Chrysum and I'm ready to chop it up and pot into the ground. So you can see this red here and this is literally an onion bag that I just attached to a node and it was in a really humid area so I don't know if it was really that necessary. <gasps> I just cut it off but this is the cutting and it grew too tall so it got burned again. Well actually this is not the one that got burned. Actually yes it is. So it did. It got burned again. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is the leaf that got burned too. So let's take it out. I just put these clips on to try and keep it confined to the node and not just everywhere. But I've been kind of misting it. My cabinet is very humid. I got this little fan and humidifier in one. I haven't had it long at all, but it works really well. Although I am hesitant to like link it for you guys and recommend it to you guys because I feel like the fan is starting to give up and that is not good so I don't know we'll see I don't know for sure if it is giving up but I just feel like it is <laughs> because it doesn't sound as strong as it used to okay so maybe this mesh bag was a mistake the roots are kind of stuck in the little meshes and I wanted to save this because I enjoyed this method, but I am gonna have to cut a little bit to get it out. Wow, I don't know, like, I've never tried this before, like I mentioned, and I didn't know if it was gonna work, but it <laughs> kind of worked. I don't know if it actually worked or if it was just growing anyways, because look, this one had zero, um, it didn't have anything on it, and the roots still grow a very significant amount so uh we'll see when i'm finally able to get this off so hold on just a moment yeah. okay i got it off and it's time to see the final results okay so this is how the roots look these are the ones that were in moss compared to these i feel like it did do a little something i don't know if it was much but I'm gonna remove this leaf because I never needed it since it's so messed up. And I'm gonna cut off the excess stem down here because we don't need that. And this is my cutting. This is my cutting and I found these in my backyard. They're probably from vegetables, but I like that it's clear. So I'm gonna be able to see the root formation and I think I'm gonna put this top node, this upper node, that is kind of like has the roots growing in and I'm gonna have it slightly in the soil. So hopefully it might root more. This cutting is looking absolutely gorgeous though. I'm very happy with it. And this plant right here, this poor plant, <laughs> can continue growing. I did put moss on here too, this lower area and i can't see any roots none of them like grew out of the moss like it did for the upper root i don't know i i don't want to open it yet because if it did work i put it on a node that didn't have a leaf by the way but if it did work if it's if it is working i want bigger roots like probably big enough so that i could see them like the other one um, but this plant will fit back in the cabinet because it wasn't fitting anymore with how tall it was getting But now without this upper layer, it's definitely gonna fit. So we're gonna pot this up and Behind me I have my varicosum which no longer fits in my cabinet. It hasn't fit in a while but this is how the stem looks and I do want to propagate it, but it's growing really well and I kind of don't want to stop what we've got going on you know what i mean i'm gonna try air layering it i think the same as the milano chrysum and then i'll decide on whether to cut it or not i'll just let it keep growing how it is and let's get potting this so 
I also want to probably be this Hoya, but we'll do that in a little bit. I'm using this soil mix, which is leftover soil mix that I made for my Gloriosum when I repotted it. And I think it's going to be a good mix for this Milano Chrysum. That completely used up all my mix, which is what I feared. So now I'm going to have to make more mix. And I guess I'll show you what I end up making. I'm gonna get my mixed stuff. Okay, I've got a lot of ingredients here. I have some, like a little bit, a really small bit of cocoa chunks and fiber. And I'm gonna not add this in. Okay, so I'm adding worm castings. And peat moss. I hope it's not too dry. I kind of hate peat moss. Sparkle and hummus. This is how well I kind of layered it all, but um, I don't hate peat moss because of you know like how it acts as a as a um, I don't know something to put your plants in, but because it's kind of hard for me to work with since it's so light and it dries out and it gets dusty um but it's fine okay so i'm just gonna finish this off there we go i'm thinking that when i water it it will kind of settle it because it's pretty high up on there but <laughs> it's like getting a new plant some plants i don't like having duplicates but a milano chrysum yes i will definitely take a duplicate or five <laughs> i love this plant and i've been seeing well i've been seeing like variations of varicosums and they look so beautiful and it makes me want more varicosums and i have seen a like a green uh gloriosum and i really want one of those and all these variations make me want like duplicate plants but that look different and i have to literally hold myself back usually when i buy plants i don't have like it's not hard to hold myself back i kind of look at it and i'm like oh every time i go to a shop i can enjoy it but online shopping for like aeroids and stuff oh my gosh i literally have to like close my laptop and stop looking at them otherwise i will buy them and i <laughs> have to say that i did go crazy buying plants this weekend and i'm not going to be able to pick up a lot of them until i think september so i'm not going to be able to show you guys until september but i do have some coming in the mail really soon so i'll do an unboxing but i'm very excited okay anyways back getting back on track i'm gonna getting free plants pretty much i'm gonna propagate my oil and yaris i got it from Andy's orchids and it's on this stick which I'm looking at the plant and I'm thinking it doesn't look like it's living its best life I could be wrong but I just feel like it's not living its best life because it's living on this little stick and I don't think I'm equipped to take care of it it needs to be watered like three times a week which usually Hoyas I don't have to water anywhere near that often so I'm gonna propagate it and then I'm gonna have two Hoyas and I won't be as stressed about this one because this one I'm stressed about and the wood's kind of falling apart because I keep soaking the wood. But for this plant, I was thinking about propagating it in here. This is a little container. You can tell I've used it for plants before. So I think I am gonna use this because I don't know i would just feel comfortable if it had a lot of humidity i might try two different things because i don't want this plant to die but i'm just gonna add a small layer of um cocoa fibers at the bottom because everything else it's gonna fall through it's just gonna fall straight through the fibers and it's hard to mix in fibers like thoroughly kind of like mixing in sphagnum moss with something like it's not easy you kind of just have to layer them in together the finer amendments are 
falling through the cracks of the big amendment that i hope i explained that okay but there we are look at this huge piece of fiber like what am i supposed to do with this okay so i'm gonna chop it okay i'm gonna chop it lower down like lower down to the bottom because i'm pretty sure this thing actually is growing and i'm not murdering it <laughs> i think if i was gonna murder it it would have died by now maybe not so this is what i have i'm gonna chop on both sides oh right here is perfect so this is how short she is now definitely not too short not much shorter even but these are my two cuttings they're pretty healthy cuttings like these are pretty big big for cuttings and uh, i don't know if this is the best way to do it but i was planning on just laying them in the soil the thing is i don't want the leaves to like rot away i think it'll be fine so i think i'll lay this one in the soil and then this one i will plant and hope that works it does have a little aerial root growing just like a very very small one so maybe that will help it uh, looking at these leaves it doesn't look that healthy so maybe it's gonna pop getting uh so i'm just gonna put this in here and i'm gonna stick the bottom into the ground so maybe that will be beneficial so like i'm just planting it like normal and then just laying its body so this is a pretty big setup for just one but i planted it like i stuck it in like a little plug i just laid the rest down and i'm gonna water it and then just keep it like this and i am gonna plant this one so i'm removing this bottom leaf but i'm gonna plant it in an already like a little propagation cup i already have so this is a propagation cup that i already have established and there's only two plants in here but one of them is a peperomia and i feel i don't know why actually now that i'm thinking about it i don't know why i feel like the peperomia has similar rooting conditions as a hoya but that's what i feel um there is a little clover thing in here so i'm gonna try and pull it out I don't think I completely removed the root system, but I'm burning this. I have way too many clovers everywhere. So I'm going to do pretty much what I did for the peperomia. I just literally stuck it in here and we're going to hope it works. And I kind of like that it's keeping the foliage off the, the ground, like the soil, because I am worried. I'm going to put it directly against the cup. I'm worried that the leaves are gonna rot like that's why I didn't want to put both cuttings in the same in this because I'm worried that it might cause the leaves to rot but here's what I did I put it at the edge put it at the edge of the cup so I'll be easily be able to see all of the growth going on I'm really excited for this actually <laughs> I have a lot of faith in this one I don't know so much about this one but I do like trying new things so I'm gonna continue doing it and I have this propagation potted up, so beautiful. And do I have anything else I want to propagate? I was thinking about propagating my varicosums and that's why I thought this video would kind of take a while because I wanted to propagate them. But I think I just kind of want to let them grow and I'm going to air layer it. Oh, I forgot I wanted to do that. So I'm gonna air layer it right now. I wanna air layer it because I think it looks so beautiful and I don't wanna have any struggles. He has spider mites again. Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. I'll just do it here. So I just bought this when I went to Walmart and it's Captain Jack's dead bug. I've read some of your comments saying that you use this and you like it, so I wanted to give it a try. I still have my Mite X, which is specifically for spider mites, but I do want to try this. Spider mites are really the only, the only pest that I deal with. I have had trouble with scale. I've had mealybugs once, 
that was it. And it was on a skin dapsis that's still alive. Like it wasn't even a problem. And I've had scale. I got scale on my Monstera that I used to keep um, under my window next to my greenhouse. It got scale somehow and I noticed it and I was like, okay, this one is going outside. It needed to go outside to kind of, um, for better growing, a better growing experience for it because it wasn't getting enough light. Well, it was, but it was very, um, at a weird angle. So the plant was starting to shape itself very odd, in a very odd way. So I moved it outside and it's reorienting itself to all be facing in one direction which is good and i think i'm gonna move it back in when i inspect it to see if there are any bugs on it and i'll treat it if anything but i feel like scale might be the worst i haven't tried treating it yet but it seems very hard to bring back under control once it goes crazy i used to have a uh, a weed plant. I forgot what they're called. Hemp? No, it's not hemp. I used to have a weed plant and it was a really beautiful one and I literally had to chop it up and throw it away because it got really bad scale and also it made my room smell disgusting. <laughs> so yeah, I threw it out. Um, if it didn't have scale though, I would have kept it. If I have footage of it, I'll show you guys because it was such a beautiful plant. Like, I don't like weed plants. This is, this is getting so off topic. But I don't like, I can't remember what they're called. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> cannabis. It was a cannabis plant. There we go. Um, so yeah. It was really beautiful. Like I wouldn't have kept it because they smell, they are so annoying to take care of. They're the most needy plant of all time. Um, but it was, it had like beautiful dark foliage and I just got it for free. So I was like, yes, I'll take that. And then it got thrips and I was like, bro. So yeah, I had to chop it up and get rid of it completely. And I haven't gotten another one because it was so much work and I only had it for like a month before, you know, it got infested and I didn't even want to look into how to um, cure it because it was a very bad infestation. I had it under my purple grow lights so I didn't notice that it was infested until it was so infected that um, the leaves were dying, you know, when you have too many pests and and the leaves all start turning yellow and falling off. And it looks like a watering problem, but it's not. So that's what happened to it. But yeah, I usually only have to deal with spider mites, but I deal with them so freaking often. And I feel like you can never fully get rid of them, which you probably can't. Anyways, back to the topic. I am going to air layer it. And this might be controversial, but I'm going to use the same exact sphagnum moss as I used on my other plant. Oh my gosh. That thing just collapsed. So I'm going to use the same sphagnum moss and I'm going to show you how I did it now because I'm able to. So here it is, my little plant. I'm going to use this node right here because this is where the plant doesn't have any leaves. It's like the last node before it's at where the plant is growing. And I'm just gonna wrap it. Just make a little bed and you wrap him in the bed. And then I just tie this off. Oop. Just like that, but it's open on both sides. So to close it, I kind of try and wrap the edges of the taco per se and I clip it and I have these cute little dragonfly clips so I just oop, cover it and then clip it on so this is how it looks and it's completely covered up and I'm just gonna do the same to the other side oop, so there it is and it's kind of ugly with the red but I literally do not care <laughs> I just need it to propagate. 
And since this isn't going to be in my cabinet, which is very humid, I'm going to have to spray this probably every day, probably two times a day. Uh, but that's okay. I It doesn't fit in my cabinet, otherwise I would put it in there while it roots. But what, I'm hoping this works. Um, I might end up wrapping it in a plastic so that I don't have to keep on spraying it. But for now, I'm just gonna see how this goes. So that's it for today's video. It was kind of all over the place, but I have one new plant and I have two other plants on their way to becoming new plants. Um, thank you so much for watching through this rambled nonsense and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Okay, bye.